I have decided to bring one extra video before we proceed to the concrete strategies and I will try to draw the ideal market due to transaction cost theory. So let's begin with this is our organization. So this is organization. This is us. And now there is going to be some environment around us. So our company is dealing, uh, let's say, fruits and vegetables. So fruits and vegetables. This, this is going to be the first point of the ideal market, is that the companies are, are uh, dealing or trading uh, non-specific goods. So non-specific goods. And these, these fruits and vegetables are considered to be non-specific when we compare it with some uh, technological parts or some technologically important inputs so that they are non-specific. And later on you will see why, why this is important. And now our suppliers. We have got uh, several farmers. So here is farmer number one, number two and number three and we can continue this way until let's say farmer 50 farmer 50 and this means this is the second point that we have got we have got large number of suppliers so we have large number of suppliers suppliers or, or exchange partners. I will rather draw it this way. So, large number of exchange partners. Because it is not just about these suppliers. We are also, this is, this is our input side. So, this is the input side. And this is the output side. So, here is the output. Here is the output. And here we have also large number of trading partners or exchange partners so here is maybe a vegetable market here is vegetable market here is some supermarket and we can continue until maybe number 50 again so this is this is the important part not just the suppliers but the exchange partners so both sides our input and our output side as well so I will finish the drawing so input so let's move to the first point and it is going to say about the environment itself. So this is our environment and let's make it a little bit more simple and we will say it's a national environment or environment of a country. Environment of a country. Of a country. And that there are some uh, legal uh, frameworks within which we are operating and these are going to bring us the third point of the ideal market and that, that is that uncertainty is low so uncertainty is low is low which which can include for instance that the political situation is very fine the uh, economy is growing with a stable pace so we can uh, really uh, rely on these facts and the uncertainty that is surrounding us is very low. So these were these were the three points or this was the ideal market for our transaction cost theory. And let's imagine what can happen if, if things go wrong and the transaction uh, costs begin to rise. So how they can rise? We can maybe start um, at first dealing just just apples just apples so that we are getting to specific goods now we are getting to more specific goods then then our second point large number of suppliers now decreases now we have got just two suppliers so we have small number of exchange partners exchange exchange partners and our third point, well, the uncertainty increases so that the economy is no longer that stable. So the uncertainty increases. And what is going to transaction cost tell us how we should solve it? So according to it, we should be more formal or we should uh, choose more form formal linkage mechanisms. So 
due to theory theory we choose more formal linkage mechanism linkage mechanism so so how in reality can this look so we will make a more more much more concrete agreements with these two partners so that we can be sure that uh, the deals that we have in, with them are going to sustain for a long time uh, then uh, the specific goods so that we really focus okay how we are going to trade these our specific goods and so that we are able to sell them and then the uncertainty increases so that we have got the stability or the reliability in this our formality of the agreements so these were a little bit more of a intuition in how should uh, ideal market should look and hopefully see you in next videos